Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, meet Praneet. In today's video, we are going to discuss the July Visa Bulletin. Now some of you might have already seen it and some of you might have seen the title or the thumbnail. And yes, there is some good news for Indians in this Visa Bulletin. Generally, when we look at the Visa Bulletin, there is not much of a good news for Indians. Mostly what we see is the dates getting retrogressed or seeing no movement. But today, in this visa bulletin, in this video, you will find out that there is some good news. There is some movement that's that's being seen for Indians in employment-based categories. Now, before we move into the employment-based categories, let's first discuss the family-based categories because we also see some movement in that. Now, to start with, let's if you on your screen, you will see these charts from June and July to give you a comparison. And we'll discuss only a few categories because F1, 2, F2B are the main ones for the rest, F3 and F4. There is a very, very huge retrogression and there is no point in discussing them because there's not much of a movement that we see. So if we look at F1, right, uh, in the row, the date was 8th of July, 2015 in June, and it has moved by almost three to four months in the, so from July, August, September, October, so by three months, in the row for F1 in the July 2024 visa bulletin. For China, it was again has the same movement that was for row, like from 8th July 2015 to 22nd October 2015. And the same goes for India. Well, when it comes to Mexico, and you have to know that Mexico and Philippines have the most retrogression in family-based. India tops that list of retrogression in employment-based. But in case of family, it's always the, it's the Mexico. Uh, mostly in all the categories. Now, if you come to, uh, for Mexico, it was first Jan 2002 uh, in the F1 for 2024, June, visa written, and in July, it was 8th May 2002. So basically, again, five months of movement. Then when we go to Philippines, there is no change in the dates. If you get to F2A, F2A is important because it's for spouses and children of the permanent residents. And a lot of people who migrate to United States uh, on a green card, they might have their family coming on the same green card and those would be counted for F2A. And in F2A, if you look for the row, it was 15 November 2021 and it's the same for the uh, row in the July. The same goes for China, there's no change. For India also, no change. However, for Mexico and Philippines also we see no change in the F2A. So the major change that we saw was for the F1. Now, coming to F2B, there is, again, a month of movement that we see for Rho, that is uh, from 1st April 2016 in June to 1st May 2016 in July 2024. If you go to China, again, same movement. India, again, same movement. And then coming to Mexico, no movement. And Philippines, there is no movement. So overall, if you look at the family-based visa bulletin, uh, for July, there is not a great movement or a huge movement seen across the board for all categories. There is some movement seen around three to five months of movement um, uh, seen in the in the F1 for uh, Rho, China, India, and for Mexico. So this was the family based. Now let's go to the employment based, which I know all of you are waiting for. So the good news, the exciting news is. If you look at EB1, the employment-based first category, India has jumped by almost 11, like almost 12 months. That is one year. So I think some of us were talking about this, that the EB1 retrogression doesn't stay for a long time. It moves, and when it moves, it moves pretty quickly. The reason behind that is EB1 is the one which gets 28.6% uh, of the visas. Then from that, Anything that sprinkles down and that is not used by EB4 or uh, is go EB4 and EB5 goes back to EB1. And then if Rho is current, then that's good news because anything in Rho EB1 that's not used also goes to Rho, sorry, the most retrogressed country in EB1, and that is India. So that's very, very good news for all of us because we have jumped by almost 12 months. So to give you uh, exact dates, uh, Rho was current, it remained current, which is great news and it should remain current. It, the, if it remains current throughout, that means it's, it could help us get more movement in EB1. Coming to China, it was 1st September 2022. It moved by three months. It became 1st November 2022. 
And India, which was 1st March 2021, has now moved to 1st Feb 2022. Uh, Mexico and Philippines were current and they remained current. Coming to EB2, EB2 saw again a two months of movement for Rho. From 15th Jan 2023, it moved to 15th March 2023. For China, uh, again a month of movement. For India, again two months of movement. And then uh, two months of movement again for Mexico and Philippines. So India didn't see a much of a movement in EB2 and you know because EB1 that is not something that's not used by EB1 goes to EB2. Right now everything is being used by India because India is most retrogressed in EB1. So there is very very less spillover that you would see slipping into EB2 or EB3. right? But EB4 or uh, category that's not used goes always goes back to, uh, to, uh, to, to EB1. In this case, EB4 also is kind of retrogressed for all the countries, so there's not much of uh, spillover coming from there as well. But overall, till Rho remains current and we have this 140,000 supply, uh, green card supply for employment based, EB1 should have some movement going on until there is a big influx of EB1Cs or a lot of people just start applying for EB1A. Now coming to EB3, uh, this is where things have not been good. Now, good news always comes with bad news, right? So generally, it's, it's kind of a balance that you generally see, right? So if you see uh, for EB3 uh, in row, it was 22nd November 2022. It moved back by almost 11 months. So more, more than 11, it moved back. Uh, so it was, yeah, so it's basically it moved back by uh, 11 months and now it's 1st December 2021. And I have kind of talked about this in my previous videos and also USCIS mentioned that there would be a retrogression for EB3 and in row and that would also affect Mexico and Philippines. And now if you look at the dates for China, no change. India changed by one month, which is not any specific or significant change for again for Mexico and Philippines, they match the date for row. And USCIS is, always, is also saying that maybe in, in August visa Britain you will see further retrogression in these dates for EB3 row. Also, it might be that they have they have to list it as unavailable. And the question comes why? The, the reason is because there is huge demand of EB3 right now for row Mexico Philippines. Row here means rest of the world. But overall, the good news is that India is not further retrogressing. And that is happening because probably India is using all its getting. There was some uh, spring over that was coming that's not, that's not yet currently being utilized by AB1. So overall, not much effect to India or maybe also the other reason that we are not thinking about is maybe the, the number of applications in AB3 in that particular month might not be high. So it basically moves month by month, how many applications you have, how much you are covering. So I think overall, it's good news that India is not retrogressing in EB2 and EB3. There's always, there's some movement seen for both EB2 and EB3 and a bigger, biggest movement was seen for EB1. And I wish it keeps the same way, it doesn't get retrogressed. However, EB3 retrogression for row would definitely affect other categories. When the pressure becomes higher on the row, things start to retrogress for other uh, things because we have seen that when EB1 row retrogressed, it retrogressed EB1 India and China. So I think retrogression is kind of uh, dependent on how other countries are doing. But all on all, I think EB1 is generally most utilized by uh, India and China, specifically like there are other countries which also utilize it. But I think mostly India and China utilizes this because that's where you have more retrogression EB2 and EB3. But now if EB3 is also getting retrogressed for uh, for other countries, then there might be more pressure on EB1 coming soon. So I think this was that. This was the video. I wanted to touch base on it. I wanted to tell you about it. And I think I'm really excited, really happy that EB1 is moving. So any of you who are on EB2, right, and or EB3 even, and you have been in your niche for a long time, you have been uh, stuck on H1B or maybe trying for O1, Talk to one. Let's let's connect. Let's let's discuss your profile. Let's see what is there. What is what is what are the gaps? How we can fill those gaps? How we can enable you to maybe 
move or strive towards EB1, right? There's no, there is no, uh, there is no uh, good in not trying, right? So I would say at least try, try yourself, right? Start looking into the criteria that are set for EB1, see what is in there, see what you have, see what is missing, and try to evaluate yourself, right? And if you need help, I am there. There are other creators, there are attorneys who are all willing to help people who really need EB1. So with that, I would say thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and colleagues. As you know, I try to make videos on immigration, uh, specifically on US immigration. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. There is an EB1 success story coming, which will definitely be very exciting for all of you watching because it's coming from a niche which you might not have imagined. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next video very, very soon. Till